Hey guys, what's going on? James here. And in this video today, we're going to be reviewing the second day of Tampa Bay Buccaneers OTAs. I know I'm, uh, you know, a little bit of time late on this, considering we are now currently on day three of Buccaneers OTAs, that being May 27th. This is from yesterday, May 26th, but I still wanted to make this video and give you guys updates on who's doing good and uh, who is, uh, you know, improving and showing what they can do in these OTAs. Now, I am not getting this information from our friends over at pewterreport.com today, but don't worry, we'll have plenty of, uh, of uh, great information from Pewter Report guys here in the next few videos. But instead, I'm getting this information from Carmen Vitale over at Buccaneers.com. She does a wonderful, wonderful job. I will have a link to the uh, Buccaneers article website so you guys can read all of this for yourselves. But... Let's get into it. Takeaways from 2021 Bucks OTAs, May 26th. It was another hot and sunny day with temperatures dropping 90 degrees on the football field of Advent Health Training Center. Perfect football weather, at least perfect football weather in Florida. Voluntary workouts continued in phase three of the NFL's offseason training program on Wednesday. It was the second day of practice for the Buccaneers with over 40 players in attendance. We had talked about that yesterday. Uh, the starters are not in attendance right now though no contact will be allowed in any of these practices and it isn't a full squad the energy level has still been on par with that of a normal in-season practice there are individual periods following by team periods in different installs as new players especially get used to their new system on both sides of the ball here are a few observations from wednesday Fourth round pick Jalen Darden continues to impress as much as he can in shorts and a t-shirt. His routes are crisp and he positions himself well to make the catch. We had talked about that yesterday or the other day with a pewter report where they had given the same type of praise for Jalen Darden in the first day of OTAs. He had a great grab on a comeback route in individual routes where his timing with quarterback Kyle Trask looked right on the money. Again, we have talked about that relationship between Kyle Trask and Jalen Darden. That's going to be some Something that's going to be worth paying a lot of attention to in the preseason and in training camp as well because I mean it seems like those two are already developing a very 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 strong chemistry so good to see Jalen Darden get even more praise from more people defensive players are getting in on the ball skills linebacker Grant Stewart was good about getting his hands up in front of receivers showing off some of his coverage skills again more praise for Grant Stewart, who's been getting loads of praise ever since he's been drafted, which has been awesome to see. Somebody should interview that guy. Fellow rookie linebacker KJ Britt got some air at the line when he jumped up in front of a quarterback or in front of quarterback Ryan Griffin. The middle level isn't just relying on the secondary to try and disrupt the passing game, however possible. So KJ Britt showing a little bit of some pass rush skills, getting up in front of Ryan Griffin, you know, uh, working on disrupting the pass and whatnot. Good to see that. Both Stewart and Britt have gotten their fair share of work as well, taking the majority of the reps on defense without the benefit of a full team to rotate with. Outside linebacker Cam Gill, who recorded a half sack in Super Bowl 55, got his hands on the ball on Wednesday, batting down a pass and coming with or coming down with for with it for what would have been a pick six. So Cam Gill it's in a little bit of an interesting situation, right? Because right now, the Buccaneers pass rushers, you have Shaq Barrett, you have Jason Pierre-Paul, you have Joe Tryon, who's dealing with some injury stuff, but he should be fine. And then you have Anthony Nelson. Depending on what, you know, the Buccaneers do with that edge rusher position, how many guys they decide to keep there, it's Cam Gill versus Quentin Bell. Cam Gill has got a little bit of praise here, so maybe he has a little bit of leverage there. Maybe he has a little bit of an edge over a guy uh, like Quentin Bell. Safety Javon Hagan, who also contributed late in the postseason when his name was called on for the NFC Championship game in Green Bay, joined Gill in interceptions. Hagan crept up and seeing that a ball was a bit overthrown, hustled down and made a diving grab to come up with the takeaway. Hagan also looks a little leaner than he did last year, and it seems to have translated into some more speed on the back end so far. And then finally, Tanner Hudson made the catch of the day with a diving grab in the back of the end zone during the last team period of the day. And I also want to say the Buccaneers posted this on their social media. TJ Simmons, friend of the channel, very good friend of the channel, had another really good grab during the Buccaneers OTAs yesterday. So a little bit of praise there for TJ Simmons. But, you know, Javon Hagen is interesting because Javon Hagen, you know, Bruce Arians had talked about him, gave him some praise. I believe I had talked about that in another video. But, you know, Javon Hagen, 
with the Buccaneers' current situation right now, with that safety pos position, they have three guys. They have Antoine Winfield Jr., you have Mike Edwards, and you have Jordan Whitehead. After that, they lost Andrew Adams in free agency. He is now on the Eagles. They need another guy to step up, potentially, as that fourth safety. It's not going to be Grant Stewart. He was, you know, potentially a linebacker safety hybrid. Now he's just a linebacker full-time. So that creates a very unique, interesting opportunity for a guy like Javon Hagan. And it seems like he's gaining more and more momentum on his side to potentially make that final 53-man roster. He's looking solid in practice. We don't know who he got that interception off of. Could have been Kyle Trask. Could have been Ryan Griffin. We just have no idea. But He's building more and more momentum. He's losing weight. He's looking crisp. He's looking clean. Uh, Bruce Arians had even said, you know, that Javon Hagan impressed him in that rookie mini camp. So Hagan's going to be a guy who really should be getting a lot of attention moving forward here as he just gets more and more praise along with some of these other guys like Grant Stewart's getting a lot of praise. KJ Britt's been getting some praise. Jalen Darden has been, you know, send Jalen Darden to the moon, basically. I mean, that dude is getting praise left, right, and center. And, uh, you know, all those guys who are getting a lot of attention, it's going to be worth, you know, keeping an eye on Javon Hagan being one of those guys. And then Tanner Hudson, it's nice to see him get a little bit of some, uh, you know, credit there for making a good catch. And uh, TJ Simmons as well, who's also getting a little bit of credit just from here on the channel. I know he had a good catch because I saw the video of it. Good job, TJ Simmons. Tanner Hudson, he's also in, in, in a uh, very interesting situation for that fourth tight end job you know, battling some of the other guys who could potentially usurp him for that spot. But we'll have to wait and see. Anyway, guys, that's really all we've got from day two of OTAs. Not a ton of notes here, but it's still worth talking about. It's still worth discussing because you never know who's going to make an impact on this team. All these guys are battling for special teams jobs. They're battling for potentially backup jobs. And uh, it's nice to keep an eye on who's doing good. You know, and training camp this year, that's going to be open to fans. That's going to be an absolute freaking blast, by the way. Uh, I'm going to be there, you know, for a couple of those. I'll try and go as much as I can, but we'll have to wait and see on it. But uh, yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun to see this team practice in person. And now we know some more names to keep an eye on. But anyway, guys, what do you think about all of these players, all of the notes here from Carmen Vitale over at Buccaneers.com of day two of OTAs? What are your thoughts? Anyway, guys, thanks so much for watching this video. Hope y'all enjoyed. Now we'll see you all in the next video or the next live stream. But until then, and as always, guys, goodbye for now, and go Bucks.